properties of nerve fibers the two key properties of nerve fiber are excitability and conductivity excitability refers to the ability of the nerve to generate an action potential whereas conductivity refers to the ability of the nerve to conduct an action potential along the entire length of the axon Excitability is a property of any tissue or cell by which it can react to external or internal environment. When we talk about nerve, the nerve is highly excitable and this property is acquired because of the fluctuation of ions which are present across the cell membrane leading to the generation of action potential. So the nerve can be stimulated by any type of stimuli. It can be a thermal stimuli, electrical, mechanical or a chemical stimuli. But when we talk in an experimental setup, the most preferred signal is the electrical stimulus. It is used, why? Because it can be accurately controlled for its magnitude and the frequency. Therefore, it is a preferred mode of giving the stimuli. Now, the studying of the nerve excitability with respect to stimulus can be done under four subheadings. Strength duration curve, all or none response accommodation and infatigability. Now the strength duration curve, what is it? It is a graph that is plotted using different strength of stimuli and different duration of time for studying the properties of nerve excitability. You can see here the strength is plotted along the y-axis whereas the duration is plotted in the x-axis. So what do we see here? We see that as the strength of the stimulus is increasing, the time required to excite the membrane is decreasing. So, this proves that an action potential is produced only if the nerve is stimulated by adequate strength of stimuli and of adequate duration. The two important terms that we must know regarding this strength duration curve, one is Rio base that is abbreviated as R. It refers to the minimum intensity of stimulus which if applied for the adequate time that is the utilization time produces a response. So you can see in this graph it is applied for the utilization type to bring about the action potential and since it is a voltage or a stimulus it is measured in volts. So next is the chronexy that is the duration. It is the minimum duration for which strength of double the intensity of Rio base is applied to produce a response. And it is measured in milliseconds. So what is an importance of having this Rio base and chronaxi is that this chronaxi is an index of excitability of the tissue. Among nerve and muscle, the more excitable one is the nerve. So we can compare the excitability of nerve and the muscle in different physiological and pathological condition to come to a conclusive diagnosis. So chronaxi we can say is inversely proportional to the excitability and nerve has a shorter chronaxi compared to the muscle meaning that nerve is more excitable as compared to the muscle. So as we said the significance of knowing this strength duration curve for example, in nerve injuries or degenerations of the nerve, we can compare the excitability of nerve to its normal physiological being. And similarly, in the muscle, it can help in diagnosis and prognosis of degenerated disease related to muscle or the regeneration of the motor neurons. You can see the same thing in this figure which has been um, taken. And this nerve and the denervated muscle, you can see, and compare the chronaxi of both nerve and the muscle. Another characteristic property of excitability of the nerve is all or none response. We know an action potential, whenever it is fired, then it is of constant amplitude and shape, irrespective of the magnitude of the stimulus. So whenever an action potential is there, it is fired in an all manner, and if the stimulus is sub-threshold in nature, it does not fires. So you can see in this graph, we have two things. One is the membrane potentials. We have different potential sub-threshold. Then we have 
stimulus of threshold and then we have supra threshold stimuli and you can also see the responses of action potential for the sub threshold stimulus you can see correlate with the graph showing the action potential there is no action potential because the stimulus does not produce sufficient amount of uh, excitation for the nerve then there is a threshold stimulus which produces excitability in the nerve and you can see the generation of spike potential and even if we apply a stimulus which is greater than the threshold which is known by the name of supra threshold there occurs no increase in the magnitude of the action potential you can see in the graph the potential which are produced for, for threshold and the supra threshold stimulus are equal in height or amplitude the property of accommodation states that if the stimuli that is so obviously of the threshold stimulus if it is applied quickly then an action potential is produced however if the stimuli is slowly uh, rising to the threshold level it fails to produce an action potential now the basis for this accommodation is sodium and potassium channel sodium channel we know causes the phase of depolarization whereas potassium channels are responsible for repolarization so whenever a stimulus is applied quickly what will happen more number of sodium channels are open so there is more of depolarization compared to the repolarization current as a result of which action potential is produced however if we go slowly what will happen the sodium channel are fast to close a uh, fast to open and fast to close as a result of which less number of sodium channel will be available to cause the influx of sodium channel uh, sodium ion and more opening of the potassium channel will be there which will result in the repolarization current as a result of which there will be no firing of the action potential so in this slide you can see the two types of uh, stimuli that is the square pulse stimuli that causes the phenomenon of accommodation and the saw tooth pulse stimuli which is a quick response in the form of action potential because of greater opening of the sodium channels we know this property of infatigability of the nerve that means nerve cannot be fatigued even if it is stimulated for a long time and the basis of this lies in the refractory period for the nerve no fresh impulse can be generated or conducted through the nerve fiber during absolute refractory period resulting in infatigability of the nerve so let us understand the different type of refractory periods that are present in a nerve this refractory period which is a property of excitability of the nerve is nothing but the recovery time of one action potential before it fires another action potential so this refractory period is a period that immediately follows a nerve impulse transmission or an action potential the refractory period let us understand this first look at this figure which is taken from review of medical physiology by ganong this refractory period is nothing but the length of time during which a membrane is either unresponsive to the second stimuli or it requires a stronger stimulus to get excited again so if we look at this figure we find we have two main colors uh, that are green and blue the green color represent the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period is shown in blue color the most of the part of refractory period is covered by by this green color or the absolute refractory period you can see here it is approximately 2 millisecond whereas the relative refractory period is comparatively less so when we talk about this absolute refractory period it is absolute as the term suggest that no matter how strong the second stimulus is it is unable to evoke any response so there will be no firing of the action potential during this period and it extends as you can see here it is covering maximum phase 1 2 3 4 the spike potential and then 
the maximum part of repolarization is being covered here and neither a fresh impulse can be generated nor can any impulse be conducted through this area. So what is the ionic basis? We know that the phase of depolarization is basically because of the opening of sodium channels. You can see that sodium channel has two gates, activation and the inactivation gate. During the resting phase, we know that when the potential is minus 70 millivolt to minus 90 millivolt, then the gate activation gate is closed. When there is depolarization or the stimulus is there so that it reaches a threshold value, there is opening of the sodium channel, you can see, and there is generation of the spike potential. So when we talk of this absolute refractory period, you can see the phase is from the opening, the sodium channels are already open. So they cannot be open to a greater extent. And secondly, when they start closing, the inactivation gate is closed. So during this phase of absolute refractory period, the sodium gates have been inactivated. No matter how strong a stimulus is, they will not open. And the significance of this absolute refractive period is it determines the upper limit of uh, number of action potential that can be fired over a period of time. So when we have a large diameter fiber, maybe 0.4 millisecond, the absolute refractive period will determine that number of impulses that can pass through it is 2500 impulses per second. And for a small fiber, then it will be impulses generation may be just 250 impulses per second. So this absolute refractory period is also responsible for the unidirectional conduction of the action potential. Then the term is the relative refractory period. In this period, it is a transition period during which if we give a stimulus that is supra threshold in nature, it can produce a subnormal response of potential. So the ionic basis here, their phase of relative refractory period, as you can see in this figure, potassium gates have opened and they allow for the efflux of the potassium ion and also the sodium channels are in transition phase. Transition phase from the inactivation to the resting stage. So you can see in this figure showing the sodium channels, the channels are in phase 3 and 4. So both these conditions, whenever a strong stimulus is given, there can be influx of sodium resulting in depolarization and causing then firing of action potential. So if we want to highlight the difference between the absolute and the relative refractory period, so these are the differences. The absolute refractory period refers to the time span in which sodium channel remain inactive. Why? Because the gates, inactivation gates have closed. The relative refractory phase is a phase in which sodium channel transits from his inactive stage to its closed state. So no action potential will be produced in absolute refractory period because the sodium channels are completely inactive. Whereas in the relative refractory period, a stimulus must be stronger than the normal that is supra threshold to produce an action potential. And here we also have the role of potassium channels because the opening of the potassium channel will lead to the flow of potassium out of the cell that will facilitate the generation of action potential. When we talk about the factors which affect the nerve excit excitability, the first and the foremost is the strength and the duration of the current. After that, we can say that calcium is also a factor affecting it. As we can see in this figure, this figure is from a patient who has hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia is when the plasma level of calcium is less than 7 gram per deciliter, resulting in a state of tetany or hypocalcemia. In this, the chopstick sign is being manifested in the figure in which an ipsilateral tapping of the facial nerve has resulted in increased excitability of the nerve, resulting in increased contraction of the facial muscles. 
Now, what is the role of calcium in causing this increased excitability of the nerve can be understood with this figure which has been taken from Guyton. We know that sodium has two gates, the activation and the inactivation gate. The activation gate is gated by the calcium ion. So, when the, whenever there is decrease in the level of calcium, this will lead to the opening of the gate as a result of which more sodium will enter into the cell resulting in the depolarization of the uh, nerve resulting in increased excitability. And the reverse will happen when there is hypercalcemia. So whenever there is decrease in calcium level, then the next step will be the activation gate will be more open resulting in more influx of sodium ion. Another factor that affect the nerve excitability is the local anesthetics. The local anesthetics are known to decrease the excitability of the nerve and this happens because they block the sodium channel. So no more influx of sodium, no more depolarization, no more generation of the action potential.